hi everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new my name is kai and i'm really excited today because i have some madame glam pr so i've actually never tried a madame glam polish i have seen them all over i know that nail slate by val who's somebody i learned a ton about nails from uses madame glam a lot of my nail family so people like PJ and Marcy from Latina's Nail Design, um, Boo Creamy, and a bunch of other creators who are part of this little nail family that I've slowly become a part of here on YouTube. They all do Madame Glam PR and they receive polishes from them and I've always wanted to try Madame Glam. I swear I was just about to place an order and somebody actually reached out to me, offered to send me some things. To be clear, I don't get paid. To say anything that i'm about to say about these polishes this is going to be kind of my first look at this company my first look at polishes and i did receive this package for free they let me pick out a couple products so i could plan a look for you but i'm not paid to say positive things they weren't like oh you can only say positive things if we send you this that was not the agreement at all so i'm excited to give you a review now first of all I love the packaging, it's so cute. Um, it is open because I went ahead and made sure that everything arrived okay when I got the package yesterday. I did not have time to film, so this is my first try of all of these polishes. I'm going to put it open. And here it is. Now one thing I really appreciate is they package their things with this nice styrofoam this nice padding to make sure that their bottles don't get broken at all so this is what i got i ordered one regular gel this is in the color magic night i'll go through each one but i just want to show you what i got first i got the milky white builder gel that's what it looks like i like that the bottom is an opaque color of course, with gel polishes, you don't want any sunlight to be able to penetrate the packaging, so it's nice that it's got this opaque bottom even, if the sides and the top are still are opaque. You get a brush, or they sent me a brush. Oh, wow. Oh, they sent me a liner brush. Oh, that's cool. There we go. Let's look at that. I did tell the person who reached out to me that I was going to be doing like the porcelain look. Spoilers, that's what I am planning for these colors for this set. So they sent me a long fine liner brush. That's really nice. It's very skinny. I should be able to get some good details with this. And let me compare this to like my Dami, Diami, uh, Korean gel brush. So let me grab that real quickly. All right, so here's my Diami short liner brush. This is the number 10. I ordered this from Sweetie Nail Supply. Here is the thickness of the two compared. Pretty similar, I would say. The Diami brush is ever so slightly thinner, but not by that much. I would say if you're looking for a really nice thin brush, this is not a bad option. I will definitely let you know once I start using it, but at first look, um, this seems very nice. Now, Madame Glam is not necessarily like a budget nail brand. I would say things like McCart, Born Pretty, both of which are companies that I actually really do like. I started using their products when I started doing my own nails and they were sort of my entry level gels and products to get into doing nails. And I still use quite a few of those nail polishes if they're items just because I think the quality is great and the price is even better. So those I would consider like entry level, almost budget friendly nail brands. Madame Glam is a little bit more pricey. Their polishes go anywhere from like $15 to $20. However, they do offer a VIP membership where you can get discounts monthly if you are somebody who goes through a lot of nail polish. I will also have a discount code in the description and it's for 35% off. So even though their price is a bit higher at the start, they do have tons of discounts always and they have that VIP membership that gets you, I think, 50% off. So most of the time the polishes are more like $10 and they're full-size bottles. You know, they're big 
uh, half ounce, 15 milliliter bottles. So you do get quite a bit of product. Back to what I received. I got two of the embossing gels. So these I'm really excited to try. They're 3D embossing gels. And on the website, it did say they were non-wipe, which I love. I think it's so disappointing to do like a nice 3D pattern, use a an embossing gel that is not non-wipe, one that has a tacky layer, and then you have to go over it with a clear coat. And sometimes that clear coat removes some of the 3D effect and flattens it. So I'm excited to try these non-wipe embossing gels. I got black and white. And then last but not least, I got the gold gel paint. Again, it's in this really nice packaging. It's quite thick and it has that opaque bottom to make sure that if it does accidentally get exposed, the bottom that nothing inside will cure. So let me go ahead and swatch these. Okay, so for swatching, I think I want to start off with the builder gel. Let's go ahead and open this. Oh, nice. It has a pull tab. I love when it has a tab so that you can pull it back instead of having to cut out the inside. Ooh. There's something so satisfying to me about the look of undisturbed gel. Like, look at that. So smooth, so glossy. You can see the texture right here as I rotate it. It does move, so it's a builder gel. It is not like a solid nail glue. It's not going to stay in place. It will run and self-level. A nice white color. As you can tell, it's very close to the actual color of the packaging. It's not like too cool tone. It's not warm toned at all. It's that perfect neutral white. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a swatch. Just gonna use a standard gel brush here. So that's what the texture's like. It holds on the brush nicely. See, so it's not running all over the place, but it does have that self-leveling ability so that the coat will be nice and smooth if you use it like a builder gel. My plan is actually to use it more of just a milky white color. I'm a sucker for milky white, so go ahead and swatch this. Goes on nice and thick. We do a somewhat thin coat here. It moves around well. It's not like too thick to where it's gloopy and it doesn't move, but it's also not too thin to where it's running all over the place. Let me see if I can kind of even it out here on the swatch stick. This actually feels really nice to work with. I'm just playing around with it here, seeing how easy it is to move. There's a little bit of pooling at the end of the swatch stick, so I'm just dragging that excess polish back towards the what would be the nail bed. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit. Maybe I'll add just a little bit more. I really try to treat it as a builder gel, which is what it is. Noticing some thinness here, so let me just float this on. Okay, so let me let this settle and I'll see what it looks like in a minute. Wow, there we go. It's actually smoothing out really nicely. I'm just gonna hold it upside down. Noticing if you can see here, there's a bit of a divot where I applied it a bit thicker at the end. So I'm going to just see if I can actually even that out by adding a little bit more to what would be the apex. A little bit more right here. I want to see how that levels out and want to see what it looks like. Okay, I used to do hard gel for my own nails. So when I was doing my own nail extensions, I would do the hard gel method, the builder gel method, something pretty satisfying about it. Okay, and so that only took a few seconds and now look how nice and level it is beautiful i'm a sucker for a good milky white gel if you've seen my videos you know i love the born pretty milky white 
and I love the doughy milky white too. Those are some of my favorite options. I saw that Born Pretty actually has a new Hema free milky white, so I will probably be getting that soon to try out. Okay, and this is how it self leveled very, very nicely. Let me go ahead and cure this. So far, I am a big fan of this. I think the color is great. That was super easy to work with and to move around. Here it is cured. Looks very nice. The color payoff is really good too. It's got that slight sheerness to it. I'm sure I could actually apply it in thinner layers too and get more sheerness, but I did again want to build it up as if it were like a real builder gel. And it has nice opacity to it, so you can get quite a bit of opacity if that's what you're looking for by just using a lot of layers. There is a sticky layer, so as you can see here, there is that inhibitor layer, I believe is what it's called. So let me wipe that off. You have a nice white builder gel. Very cool. I'm a big fan of that. Okay. So up next, we have the normal polish. So this is their standard cream polish. It's the Madame Glam Magic Night. And it's a really pretty navy blue. Go ahead and show you. There we go. Very nice blue color. I love that these swatches, the actual colors on the cap, that we can easily tell what color you're grabbing. And the color looks very creamy. Now I will say when I was looking at the website and trying to pick which ones I wanted to order, this color was quite a bit darker. I will try to insert a photo maybe like here if you want of what the website showed. And of course it's gonna depend on your monitor what color you actually see on the website. But I was expecting something a little bit deeper. That's fine. Just understand if you order from their website, if you don't check any swatch videos out or anything like that, which I did not. Um, just know the colors might be a little bit lighter than you were expecting, depending on your monitor, depending on how it displays for you. Again, this is Magic Night. Nice creamy formula. Going on pretty easily. I like to start in somewhat thin coats to see what it looks like. Then I will add a thicker coat. I also want to test just how thick you can make a polish layer before it starts wrinkling when you cure. So let me just leave this, see how it self levels. It is a really pretty color though. It'll be perfect for what I'm looking to do. It's leveling nicely. You do see a few little streaks here and there, but I think that's just because I did quite a thin coat. So let me add just a little bit more. See how far we can really take this. I'm gonna check and see if it wrinkles when it cures. All right, so here's what it looks like. Not bad at all. Looks like you might honestly be able to do like one coat of this too. It does get a little bit wonky, a little bit thin around this area, but that's where there's quite a significant curve in the nail. And every polish I've tried tends to do that. So it has nice coverage. Let me go ahead and cure it and make sure it doesn't wrinkle. We'll see. And there we go. So that was 30 seconds. I don't see any wrinkles. Let's see. Seems pretty well cured to me. Not feeling like any soft spots or anything. There's actually barely even a tacky layer on this, it feels like. I'm gonna wipe it off anyway. Just be on the safe side. Yeah, very nice. I'm quite impressed with that. No wrinkling at all, which I find is kind of hard sometimes with darker colors to get everything cured in a nice even layer. So let me do one more layer though. It is really opaque right now. Like if you see it's quite good coverage, but let me just do one more layer just to see what full, full coverage looks like. This brush feels nice. You know how sometimes you can just feel the flexibility of a brush as you're painting with it? Like it feels like it springs back into place nicely. There is full opacity for sure. Two coats, full opacity. Very nice. Let me go ahead and cure this layer. So, so far, honest thoughts, I'm a big fan. I mean, like this applied really nicely, this builder gel, it had really good coverage. This polish here, gorgeous color. Applied really evenly. It is vegan, cruelty-free, 21 free formula, palm oil free, and HEMA free, which 
From my understanding, I think hema is one of the things that a lot of people develop an allergy to when they talk about developing a gel allergy. I could be wrong. I should probably do more research on that, but that is what people tend to be allergic to from my understanding. So that's really nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a great experience so far. I'm really glad I, you know, accepted this uh, package, this offer. That's awesome. And I'm very thankful to Madam Glam for reaching out to me. Okay, and there's that color. Very nice. I do really like that. So now I'm excited actually to try out some of their other cream polishes because I started with brands like Model Ones, like Beatles, um, really good affordable beginner brands. And don't get me wrong, they lasted me for the first year or two while I was just getting into nail art again, working with gel. And I learned a lot from using those colors. But I will say, usually the opacity is not very good with those those brands. So like Model Ones, like Beatles, you tend to get darker colors like this that have pretty low opacity and you have to do multiple coats. If you do too many coats too thick, it tends to wrinkle a little bit. At least that's my experience with their older polishes. I'll be honest, I haven't ordered like a color polish from Beatles in at least a year at this point. So maybe some of their newer polishes that they have out don't wrinkle as much. Uh, maybe they have better opacity, but I am really liking the opacity of this color. I haven't tried again the other Madame Glam colors. I have seen though plenty of people try them and it always seems like it has really good opacity. So I'm thoroughly enjoying that. So let's go ahead and get into these embossing gels. I believe they only have a couple colors right now, white and black being two of them, which are kind of your basic. These little square containers are very cute. I like that. They do come with a lid or a protective layer. And again, a tab. I love a pull tab. Ooh. Okay, so that's what this looks like. It's a very thick paint. It's not moving anywhere, which is what you want from an embossing gel. You want it to hold its shape so I can turn this over and give it a little wiggle. Nothing's going anywhere. And it has that nice little shelf on the inside, if you can see here, this little flat edge where you can wipe off your brush. Make sure you only have a little bit of paint on it, as much as you want. So let's go ahead and give this a try. And I will use the nice little liner brush that they sent me. It is holding its shape, but it's also nice and soft. As you can see here, I can push my brush in pretty easily, swirl it around. All right. All right, so it is very thick. So you definitely want to clean off your brush here. There we go. Alrighty, and it's holding its shape beautifully. You can see there. And it actually seems to layer on top of itself pretty well too. So there you go. Two lines on top of each other. Here's the profile view. It's definitely got that 3D effect, and it's not leveling to the point where you're losing that detail. I don't know if you can see super well, but I overlapped these lines slightly. Just right here. That's where that dark shadow is coming from, is where I overlapped the two lines. And that is staying. That is one thing I do really like, is that it seems like it's not self-leveling to the point where it's getting rid of that textural detail. Okay, so let me see if I can do a bit of a pattern on here.
Sorry, I'm not talking much. I am just concentrating here, trying to get these lines even. You can see, look at that, I talk, and I'm pretty sure I messed that one up a little bit. I do wish, perhaps, that this little shelf that's in the bottle, right here, see? I do wish it were a little higher up in the bottle because I find it's hard to get the right angle to like wipe off. Usually it's like right up here and you can, you know, wipe off towards the top, but I find I'm like dipping the brush in pretty deep use that little ledge and maybe that'll get better as I use more product as I kind of empty the bottle out but right now I'm like dipping my brush so far in to wipe it off that I'm just getting more polish on it so if I have one complaint it might be that uh, that ledge is a little deep into the bottle but that's it otherwise I'm actually really liking this I love a good embossing gel one of my favorite things just adding that extra little bit of texture okay let's see how it does with dots will it do small little dots let's see yeah okay you can use it for tiny little dots as well just don't want too too much on your brush Alrighty, I will wipe off my brush and I will show you the black. Okay, I'll be honest, that one was a struggle to open. It did not have the little tab on the side. I don't know if maybe that was just a manufacturing error or if perhaps this one's older and it didn't originally come with that tab. I really hope all of the future ones have that little pull tab because it just makes them so much easier to open. But here's the black, same thickness it looks like. You can move it around, doesn't seem to be budging, a little shaky shake, nothing comes out. Let's see what it looks like. Yep, nice and thick, but still with enough flexibility to be able to move it around. Let's see what it looks like here. Okay, so it is pretty opaque when you give it like a thick layer, as you can see at the very end here. Like the thicker it is, the more opaque as you get down towards where it's thinner. And that's gonna be pretty standard for black. Black is a notoriously hard color to cure. So we probably just want it to be nice and opaque. So just as a warning, I do feel like the black is a little bit more stringy than the white even. So that's something to consider. And again, you're not gonna get super, super duper thin lines with this just because of how thick it is in general. So don't expect this to be like a, a painting gel. This is an embossing gel. See here how it's that stringy texture. Which is fine, it's just something to note. this is it's just like a little flower design <laughs> so let me go ahead and cure that jeez uh, so here's the black i did have to go in and cure it twice because one cure did not seem to get all the way through but now it's all cured again no tacky layer which is whoops which is really nice i don't know what i did there <laughs> it's something let's call it that all right so here are these two and then I have one final gel left, that is this gold gel paint. So 
So this is not an embossing gel. So like, here's the difference in the packaging. This is an actual gel paint. So, uh-oh, no tab again. So it, sounds, it looks like maybe the tabs are new. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, that one came off really easily though. Nice. Ooh, look at that. So sparkly. Hmm. Let me see if I can save some of this. Okay, I made a bit of a mess, but I did save some of that paint. This is so pretty. It is a nice, like I would say, yellow gold. So it's not on the like red side. It's more on that yellow side, but it's not too yellow. It's not too yellow where it looks like unnatural. It's just a nice cool toned gold. Chock full of shimmer, chock full of glitter. Now this can be applied all over or used for small details. That is up to you. So say I wanted to layer some of this on here. What does that look like? Oh, that's nice. Okay. It is quite thick. So you're not gonna get super duper fine lines or anything. is thick. No fine lines for this one. That paints on pretty nicely. Here's what it looks like over black and gold. Over black, it's definitely more of that silver gold. Over the white, you can see here that tiny bit of background color peeking through. So the gel itself is glitter suspended in like a semi-clear yellowish orange color. On the black, that doesn't show up much at all. On the white, you do get a little bit more of that orange color coming through. Just for the fun of it, let me go ahead and paint a whole nail with this. Just wanna see what it looks like. See what kind of coverage you can get. Okay, that's pretty good coverage. Again, it's really thick, so it stays in place. I can kind of build that glitter up in one layer. Yeah, if you use enough paint on your brush, it goes up nice and thick, and you get a nice even layer of glitter. If you don't have enough paint on your brush, I'm noticing it tends to drag it a little bit. So you want your brush nice and loaded. It's gonna get you the best results. Yeah, okay. It's definitely a very nice gold glitter. Almost like a silvery gold. It's not too warm toned, not too cool toned. Has nice reflective ability. I really like this, okay. Very cute. All right, and this is the set of colors that I received. I thought I would put together a design with all of these polishes. So this is Kai from the future doing the voiceover for the paint with me section. This won't be as long or as detailed as my normal work with me videos. I know this video is already super long with all of the review portion. So I didn't want to extend it too much, but I thought I would just take you along and show you how these polishes worked in a real application situation because I know swatching can be a little bit different. This is the set that I made with these polishes. I wanted to go for like a Chinese porcelain hand painted look. It's actually the inspiration behind why I got these colors in the first place. So I start off here with the white builder gel and I tried two different techniques. So the first nail here, I laid on as if it were a builder gel. I put on sort of a slip layer and then I go ahead and build up the color to the opacity that I wanted with a thick layer. Because it is a milky gel, most builder gels are going to have some sort of transparency to them so that you can lay them on quite thick and then cure them and it'll cure all the way through. So I'm just going in here and again, building up that shape and the opacity 
I found that working on the tips with this builder gel, you did need to make sure to get it all the way to the edges. This builder gel does a really good job of clinging to itself. What I mean by that is when it self levels, it will pool and cling to itself more so than like the edges of the nail tip. If you can see here, I'm going in and I'm making sure that I just pull that gel towards the edge a little bit. Otherwise, it self leveled really nicely when I flipped it over, created a really nice arch, and I found I had to do very minimal filing to get that final shape. This time on the thumbnail, I'm going in and I am putting thinner layers to see if I could kind of use it as like a regular milky polish and build up the color that way. It does work that way too. Um, I had no real sort of issues with it. I really got the opacity I wanted in three coats. You could do thinner coats though. It self levels pretty well. I think you could get away with two thin coats if you wanted more transparency to it. It didn't have too much streakiness. As you can see here, this is two coats. And then this is that third coat. I laid this one a little bit thicker just to get full opacity for that color. I liked working with this builder gel, you know, it self leveled really nicely and minimal filing to get the finished shape. Now I'm going in with that polish the blue. I started with sort of a thicker coat. I wanted to see if it would be really uneven, how much coverage I could get. It worked fine on the pinky nail, as you can see here. It was a little bit more difficult to work on like the bigger nails with a thicker coat. There was a bit of streaking to it. I mean, that's pretty normal with a darker polish is get a little bit of streaking just because the color is in such high contrast with the nail tips behind it. But I just took off some of the extra polish from that middle finger, redistributed it to the pointer, went with a slightly thinner coat, and I was able to get really full coverage with two coats that way. It was really nice to work with. Like it was not too thick, not too runny. As you can see, I did need that second coat for full opacity, which is advertised on the website it shows i think when you buy it um if you go into the details of each polish how many coats it will take to get full opacity which i think is a nice touch on the website so two coats did it and it was perfectly fine polish was pretty easy to work with it was not too thick not too thin i did really like the brush i think i mentioned that earlier the brush is nice and flexible and it springs back into place so now i'm taking that same blue and because it does have a slight transparency to it, it's not like a gel paint. With a gel paint, you expect full transparency with one stroke. Since this is just a regular gel polish, it does have a slight transparency, which actually worked out so perfectly for this porcelain look. I could lay on one layer, it would have a little bit of that painterly-like look, a little bit of that watercolor look. So I go in, I do a bamboo pattern here. Now, I don't show it here because I didn't want this video to be crazy, crazy long, but this is like the fourth pattern I think that I had painted on this nail. I started with like a cloud pattern. I started with some cranes. I started with some things that just didn't end up working out, some flower designs. I was having a lot of trouble with figuring out exactly what patterns I wanted on all of these nails. I have, I believe, five hours of footage for just this one hand, trying to figure out what exactly I was going to design. I obviously didn't fit it all in here because I just didn't want this video to be super, super long. And it's really just me experimenting with temples and mountains and smoke and cranes and all these sorts of different Chinese inspired porcelain patterns that I just didn't love the end result of and I kept doing them over and over again. So what you see here is only the finished designs that I decided to go with. But I hope you know that in the back, uh, behind the scenes, I probably went through 10 different patterns to figure out what exactly I liked on these nails. And I'll admit, I still don't think they're perfect. There are some things that I would change if I redo this pattern. Nothing to do with the polish at all. I actually had a really good time working with all the polishes. Just things that I would change when it comes to my design and my painting method. So now I'm actually going in and top coating those blue nails because that embossing gel, the 3D one, 
is non-wipe, which is one of the major benefits, I think, of this embossing gel over others. I can top coat my nails, go in with that embossing gel, lay it down, cure it, and I don't have to worry about wiping away a tacky layer that's not going to shine, that will be dull. I don't have to worry about having to then go over this embossing gel with another layer of top coat, which as I said in the video previously, can actually flatten the look of this gel. If you go over it with like a thick top coat, it will even out that texture and you won't have the same effect. So I love, love, love that this is a non-wipe 3D embossing gel. It also probably will work really well with chrome because of that. You could most likely use a chrome powder right over the top of this and it would stick because it has that nice no wipe top coat and be super shiny. I haven't tested it, but I don't see logically why it wouldn't work out. So I do this sort of little like smoke design. I add some flowers and I'm off frame. Once again, struggle of my life. Every nail artist I think that makes videos has the struggle of painting off frame. This is the brush that they sent me that I'm using here. And I used it for, I think the whole design really. I think it worked well. It is not the thinnest that I've used. I did show a comparison between like this brush and the Diami liner brush. So it's not the thinnest, but it definitely is a thinner brush out of all of the ones that I've tried and I was able to get nice details with it. I didn't really find myself needing a thinner brush. I think if you are going to do other nail art that is even more finely detailed, you might want a thinner one, but this one worked great for my purposes here. And this was just a random flower design that I saw on some actual Chinese porcelain. So to get the designs for this look, I had looked up a bunch of pictures of Chinese porcelain and just kind of tried to see what was popular, what was usually depicted in these pieces of art and kind of base my designs off of that. I also had these really cool new 3D gel molds that I will be showing off in a future video. I wanted to do an entire video all based on 3D art molds for gel. I think they're so cool, such a versatile way to add a lot of really intricate detail to your looks. So I actually didn't film me using those 3D molds here. One, my camera ran out of space. I actually just used my phone to record these videos. So I ran out of space on my phone. I couldn't record it without dumping a bunch of data, a bunch of videos onto my computer, which I didn't have time to at the moment. So. Unfortunately, I did not film me making the 3D charms that are on the set, but I do just use the blue that came in this PR package, that Magic Knight, and it worked perfectly fine for the 3D molds. So yeah, I don't show that process here, but I will have a whole video on it later, but those were also an inspiration for this set. Now I'm going in and doing the last 3D design. This was just supposed to be like the outer rim of a plate maybe some sort of decorative platter that you might have made out of that chinese porcelain i wasn't really sure what i was going for here i just started laying down some lines again i had done so many different iterations of designs for the set that at this point i just i was just winging it i think it was like 3 a.m in the morning and i was just kind of trying to get something down this embossing gel, I will say, is very thick, so don't expect to get super, super thin lines out of it. The whole point is that it's 3D, so it will have thicker lines. So you want to keep that in mind if you are going to be designing something around it. I found that sometimes I was putting a little bit too much on my brush, so you do want to occasionally wipe it off and make sure that you don't have a big glob on there, otherwise it's going to affect the outcome and the thickness of your lines. Now I'm just going in and adding some dots. The gel is not so thick that these stayed pointed, they did kind of level out to a nice little 3D dot. 
I didn't get to use the black embossing gel in this design. I thought I had an idea for it, it just didn't end up fitting in. But I will be using it for a set later on. One of my subscribers in a previous video had suggested a literary themed set. So something based on one of my favorite pieces of literature. So I do plan on doing a Great Gatsby set. It's something that I'm reading right now with my 11th graders and it is a book that I just really enjoy. So I'll be using it for that in the future. But now I'm just going in with that gold paint and I am just adding a little bit of extra details here. Just a little bit of shimmer here and there along those white lines. This is not technically non-stick, I don't think. Did have a slight tacky layer. So I just wiped that off at the end with a little bit of alcohol and you couldn't really tell, but realistically, it's probably a little bit better if you paint that design first before you top coat. For my purposes though, I wanted it to go with that white embossing gel and I wasn't really sure where I wanted to place it before I top coated everything. So I just stuck it on here. It worked fine once I wiped off the sticky layer. This gold is a really nice pure gold, I would say. It's not super yellow toned. Sometimes I find that golds that are a little bit too warm toned, a little bit too yellow, tend to look cheap. This one is a nice in-between gold, silvery color. It's also not too dull. Sometimes glitter gels, especially gold gels, can be a little too bronzy, but this was a good in-between. While I'm finishing up the little details here, I just wanted to say thanks again to Madam Glam for sending me this package. I was literally about to order because I'd heard so many great things from other nail artists. People like Nail Slate by Val, who I've been following for a long time and who I learned a lot about press-ons from. So it's really exciting to get to try these products. I'm not paid, once again, to say anything that I say in this video. They just kind of sent these things to me and said, try them out, you know, if you could make a video on them, we'd appreciate it. But they weren't like, hey, you have to only say positives. Overall though, I did really enjoy my experience with these polishes. I think they're a great way of getting more variety of colors because they do have that VIP membership where you can get a steep discount if you're somebody who buys a lot of polishes and they do have new colors out every month it seems. They try to do like a new collection that's themed around the time, the holidays. So yeah, if you're somebody who likes to try a lot of different colors of polish, I think Madame Glam is great to check out. I do have that discount code. It will be in the description of this video. It'll save you 35% off your purchases. I'm just going in here and adding just a last little bit of depth to these watercolor nails by putting on another layer of that dark blue. And then after that, I will be done with the set. Again, I don't show the 3D elements. I will do a whole nother video on that in the future. But here is the final look. I am overall really happy with how these turned out, even though there are some things I would change in terms of my technique and the design. But overall, I really like them. I appreciate you all stopping by, watching my videos. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time. Bye!